obviously, the, the, the case for change is overwhelming. Let me just say with regard to the medical marijuana issue, I think that's a very good model, not just for medical marijuana, but for the whole set of issues about how it ought to be treated legally. That is, I think one of the, let me begin by saying I think one of the things people want to argue for is the right of each state to set its policy regarding how marijuana is going to be treated. We've always talked about the benefit of the U.S. government as a laboratory. Now, we will run into some problems that you might not expect with conservative. My, my conservative colleagues, um, with the rare exception like Terry Johnson, are uh, being hypocritical here, not only in disregarding states' rights, but as some of you will be aware, conservatism on social issues in America, unlike conservatism in other parts of the world historically, has become very popular, and they appeal to people. And uh, I have heard over and over again, whether it was the death penalty or affirmative action or similar issues that are socially divisive, that we have a solemn duty to listen to the people. And when the people vote down affirmative action, how dare you try to uh, resurrect it? And if the people are for the death penalty, then of course you should be for the death penalty. And of course, the most glaring example we have in America today of elected officials ignoring the clear, official, formal vote of the people, not polls, not random samples, but the results of open and free elections in which the people go to the polls and register their opinion. The clearest example we have of politicians not listening are my colleagues from the states of Arizona and California and elsewhere who defy the wishes of their voters with regard to medical marijuana. I mean, I, I don't understand how they do that. There's one other war that had been declared many years ago. It was declared in the early 1970s, which I believe very sincerely was ill-advised. It was motivated by many good people, but it was motivated for the wrong reason. It was motivated by the fact, by the thought that government believed they could make you a better person by messing around with your habits. It's sort of the same, same motivation that prompted our government, our people, to amend the Constitution in 1919 for prohibition of alcohol. It was a mess. It turned out, well, did the people quit drinking? No, it was turned over to the criminals and it ended up promoting bad alcohol and deaths from contaminated all the oh, terrible problems. And of course, the people wised up and they repealed it. But wasn't that rather miraculous, the respect they had at the time for the Constitution, as bad as prohibition was? They had enough respect to amend the Constitution. But what do they do today? For the past 35 years, we've had this war on drugs, which is a total failure. It doesn't work. promote this war, and it means that it's an excuse once again to invade your privacy and tell you what to do. But this doesn't mean, this doesn't mean that we endorse the things that occur in a free society. If, if it's legal to drink alcohol, if you drink too much, that doesn't mean that we endorse it. And any violence you have to condemn. In the same way in these other areas. Because it's not, this is not part of what our traditions have been about. This is new. This is different. The question of a free society is who owns your life? The government does not own our lives. You own your own life. We get our life and our liberty from our creator. Governments are there to protect that life and liberty, but not to control us. And there's a big difference.